Hello, this is a play blast I created and I think I showed it in my channel without any further comments. This is how it goes. We have uh, several cubes with similar colors but not identical colors, all with a blue sort of tint and they have trails behind them and the trails slowly fade and then we have a mix of um, animations here sometimes happening in the center of the scene sometimes far out and this is basically a mixture between two force fields which compete with each other one is a radial field and um, the other one is a, a swarm field which is called a flight here in MASH. So um, first of all we create the cubes. Polymodeling cube. Here it sits. Second we go to MASH. It's up here as well if you're under FX but uh, I usually go this way here. And um, I click on this and I have 10 of the cubes now. That's the number 10 here. I go to distribute and instead of linear I want a grid based thing because it organizes them closer together and uh, we can use a 3x3x3 three by three by three setting like this. Now I go back to the mesh node and introduce some color. It's sorted alphabetically so color is right at the top I get an extreme white color. I click on that icon, select the bluish color and change the random hue, saturation and value. You know these things from Photoshop. If you're unhappy with a green one here, for example, you can <laughs> change the random seed. Okay, <laughs> just the, the seed is three now. It's same random parameters but it changes from another uh, starting position, the random algorithm. Okay, nothing happens, uh, no animation in the scene, but color and a distribution. And um, now we need the flight. So we go back to MASH and go to flight, add a flight node. And uh, of course the particles will fly in those containers, so to say. I've covered this in a previous tutorial. Not very in-depth though, it's, uh, it's much more complicated than I can ever put into a one tutorial and understand myself actually. So the swarms are basically flying here, they're flocking around and uh, I can change all the dynamic factors here but I cannot animate the position and the motion of single objects here. The cubes are just, well, they are just uh, animated in that uh, dynamics field which has a uh, which has dynamic um, settings uh, which we can of course find here mesh flight and up here are the separation strength the search distance for example that's where the particles are being the objects are being searched if you make it very small and they will fly out they will find it hard to get back and get organized into their flocking motion so you have to leave this uh, big enough um, the field of vision how far away they look etc but um, down here you have a field section and that's a section which I recently discovered because it looks a little bit hidden here open the fields and if you ho hover the mouse over it you see accepts vortex field, uniform field, turbulence field, drag field, gravity field, Newton field etc. So uh, let's e enter a field here and the way I would uh, do it is go to FX and then you see the menu entry fields and solvers and you choose one of these um, fields here. I cho chose a radial field. It will give us an error message because the fields are designed for particle systems but we don't have particles in the scene. We have instances, we have a mesh 
M-A-S-H system in the in the scene. Nevertheless, um, we go back here to the flight node in the attribute editor. Here we have our field section and now we middle mouse drag. It's important to middle mouse drag. If you click with the left mouse button here, see what's happening in the attribute editor. The flight node disappears. So we need to be here. That's our target and we use the middle mouse button and move that field in here. Now it's in here and uh, if we double click on it we see that it's um, currently pretty strong. It's plus five and uh, since it's a radial field what it will do, you, you can imagine, it shoots the particles radially out from the center. But under the flight node and dynamics they don't exactly shoot out in all directions. They have to respect that flight dynamics and finally they find the flight box again and then they get into that sort of flocking motion. Not really the, the field, the initial field was so shockingly strong that um, they, uh, they find it hard to get back to an organized motion. So the critical point here is the radial field magnitude. If we set the magnitude to zero so the field has no effect that's what we get, the previous flocking motion. And if we set it to a negative value, like minus 1, let me get a little bit closer because I know what will happen now. They want to be there. And you see the, the, uh, the flocking field, the flight node, uh, shakes a little bit until it is certain they will never get away from here. If I change this to minus 0 0.03, a very small value, they will start to move a little bit. But you see the vertex thing here. Pretty clear they, in all directions. If I choose uh, another maximum distance, which is just below the magnitude in the radial field section, uh, animation is starting from the very beginning now again. If I use the maximum distance, a, a smaller maximum distance, they will fly off. If I use a larger flying uh, maximum distance, they will come back. So let's use trails now. Go to Mesh and down here, because they are extras, are the trails. We add trails. And we go to the very beginning, and here we have the trails. I actually did nothing else, really. The flight node colors here, this thing, uh, irritates me a little bit. You go to Flight, and here you have the view controls. And instead of Normal, you go to None, and you don't see them anymore. Also irritating is the grid, so this is much better. And if you press Alt and B and get a black background, that's even better. So now you go to the um, radial field, which is currently set to minus 0 0.0 and 0 0.03, sorry, and you set a key here. Let's reduce this to 20, sort of. Um, so we have a key, the magnitude should be, should be slightly negative until frame 208. Now we move a little bit ahead. And then we reduce this to zero. And set another keyframe, right mouse click. So the animation starts like this. The radial field 
draws them back into the center and now we get a loosened simulation. And here we want them to come back minus 0 0.04. If they're not in within the search distance, they won't come back. That's the things you have to try out for yourself. So they're flying off. Yeah, some are coming back. So that's what you have to do and find out about. They have a search distance, they have so and so many partners they will look for in the flocking motion. So currently three, they're quite happy, there are more joining now. So, um, geez, this is really getting in interesting here. It's a very random thing really because it's trying out its force fields. So you have to improvise. Well, and finally, a tip. If you go to the mesh node and to the mesh trails, you have a profile curve entry section here. Accepts a NURBS curve. So if you create a NURBS curve and drag it, middle mouse drag it, from the outliner, there's no curve here because I didn't create one, just a tip for you. If you have a curve here, middle mouse drag it in here and then the trails will use that profile curve for an extrude. Competing force fields. Mesh and Maya Dynamics.